Happy Monday. Happy day 17. We are um, moving through Lent and using the Gospel of Matthew as our guide. And today I want to make a simple, perhaps controversial, but a simple statement. I want to go on record as saying that evil is real. It's a thing. Um, at this moment, it's sort of coming back in vogue um, a bit. We're living in a culture that has been very relativistic, uh, and many have dismissed evil, but um, certainly have wanted to dismiss any, uh, any suggestion of personalized evil. People are often surprised to hear that I think uh, that there, there are spiritual forces of darkness. Uh, I'm not always comfortable with what people think that means, uh, but uh, I would just say, look, it sure seems as though Jesus thinks that there are spiritual, spiritual beings uh, that, are, that are evil, and uh, you cannot read the gospel and make much sense of it without understanding that to be true, um, and we see that in today's reading. So we're in Lent, this is this 40-day period set up uh, over a thousand years ago, during which we are to be uniquely, particularly reminded of our own personal sin and brokenness. Uh, baptism is something, a big event on, on Easter, especially in the Roman Catholic Church, and there was this 40-day period, 40 being a biblical number, 40 being the day of Jesus in the wilderness and other things. 40 days were set aside for those who were preparing to be baptized and enter the church uh, to go through a, a period of reflection and more study and perhaps fasting and other things. And so people watching this said, well, I'm already, I've already been baptized. I don't need to do that. But I think that this whole practice leading up to Easter is a good one, and I'm going to do it. Uh, Lent was consequently born. So there's no particular reason for us to be using Matthew. I mean, we want to focus on the life of Christ leading up to the cross and the resurrection. But uh, different people do different things. We have been marching through Matthew. Today we're in Matthew chapter 12. I start reading with verse 22. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. So Jesus is a traveling teacher, a, a rabbi. He's moving from village to village. The crowds keep getting larger because he's performing miracles, often healing people, sometimes fighting evil, sometimes raising people from the dead, sometimes uh, giving them food, other things. Um, and uh, verse 23, all the people were astonished and they said, could this be the son of David? That's code for the Messiah. And, and by Messiah, they meant a political military ruler who is going to uh, have the power of God to overthrow um, the Romans and uh, lead us into um, the, the new era. Uh, verse 24, but when the Pharisees heard this, they said, it is only Beelzebul, the prince of demons, uh, that this fellow uh, drives out demons. So he is he's his power, but it's only because he's made a pact with the devil. Uh, Beelzebul, by the way, is the is the name for Lord of the Flies, which is where Golding um, got his title of his book, Lord of the Flies. Um, so um, reading on, verse 25. Uh, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he's divided against himself. How can this kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do you people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if, the, by, but if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Of course, Jesus is claiming to be the Son of God. Or again, how can any man enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit, which will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. So I want to make a simple observation today. As I said, uh, I want to just note that um, evil is real. And it's, a, it's a, something we've got to deal with. Evil, evil, by the way, is also ugly and joyless. It has a great PR firm. People think of evil as being sort of exciting and daring and perhaps a little bit um, sexy. 
Uh, but it's none of those things. It's broken, it's banal, it's uh, boring, and um, it, it demands more and more and returns less and less. Um, by, by the way, as an aside, the whole devil in a red spandex suit with the horns and a pointy tail is sort of a joke. I mean, it, this, is, this is something that, that it was sort of a comic sketch of Satan that was, uh, that was created by those people who thought the, the surest way to drive out, to drive away Satan, is to mock him because he's sort of all ego, all pride, all self-consumed. And if you are belittling him by making him this little comic character, um, that that will do it. So um, I did not choose to give you a picture of uh, someone's representation of Satan because they're either comic or they're really dark and scary and I just didn't see any reason to go there. So the image that I gave you is just of black. Uh, I, I, I figured somebody had painted a painting that was just black uh, and sort of nothingness or whatever. And sure enough, I went looking for it, and in 1952, it was painted by uh, Robert Rauschenberg, and it hangs in uh, the Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco. So let me leave you with two quotes here to end our little reflection on evil. Um, one of them is the, the classic C.S. Lewis quote, um, and he says, there are two equal and opposite errors into which we race, into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence, the other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. The second one, uh, and here I'm gonna just set this challenge for you to reflect on this a little bit more. It's a good Lenten challenge. It comes from, second quote is from Alexander Solzhenitsyn uh, out of his uh, book, Gulag Archipelago. He says, if only it were all so simple, if only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds, and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and to destroy them, but the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being, and who is willing to destroy a piece of his own heart? Lord, God, may we be alert to evil, especially the evil that resides in our own hearts. Amen. Have a good day.